Okay, so we'll pop out of APR, and I'm glad I've enlightened. Well, you, at least you can. Yeah. At least you. Well, hopefully others as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now, we spoke about um, streaming from this camera, yep. and uh, this, once again, could be video in itself. I've looked into this, uh, and you basically need a university degree to work out how this <laughs> oh, works. IPSs and DNSs. Oh, and and I'm really it. hoping, I'm, I'm putting it out there to the Sony engineers, um, they're welcome to come on board here and explain it, or we could do a Skype or something with them, because I feel that this is a great feature and you know we're always hearing about oh you can now you can stream live on vimeo now you can stream live on uh youtube and live this stream that and and uh the camera has this capability i'm not quite sure how to nail it at the mm. moment uh it's not a huge problem because we go through teradex and degeros and things like we've sort of mentioned so in the past are you saying a, a usb dongle on a camera like this can replace a digero or a teradex it not to the same level of quality. Ah, so there's a caveat there. Yeah. Mm. Yep. As in the redundancy, you know, ah. it's just one mobile phone. Dongle, dongle yeah, in, yeah, in your mobile phone. So it's Wi-Fi to your, to your mobile phone. Mm. Uh, I mean, this, this will change, obviously, in the years to come because, you know, we're starting to, um, they're starting to establish the 5G network. Ooh, which I hear is like one gigabit. That's oh, it's just, Not megabytes, gigabit yeah, it's, fast. It's, it's going to be incredible, which yeah. is, once again, I'm talking this camera up, is it's a good camera. Mm -hmm. Just for the long haul, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, I can I can make it work for me. I can earn money from it, and uh, I don't think the TV networks in Australia will change to 4K. Oh any, no, not any for time news. Soon. Not for news. Anytime soon, or they'll use 4K in acquisition for great in drama and things. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But for the um, you know for the main well studio cameras, of course, mm. are um, 230 inch. Yeah, you know? they they're just are. they're just big. So yeah. another thing about this camera too is I think at the end of its life. Uh, it, it may not actually end up on the shelf in the background uh, of our studio here. Um, I think this camera could easily, um, you know, integrate into a, you know, an OB oh, yeah. environment or something because you could put a Tri-X back on it or, you know. Easily done. If you don't put a Tri-X uh, back on it, say at the Golf or something, mm. you could uh, just have someone tagging along with a mm. microwave link. You could record the tee-offs or whatever in slow-mo, mm -hmm. and then you could play that back. Oh, that's back. why this camera will do slow-mo, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you can just play it out of the SDI through the mm -hmm. microwave link. So I think this this particular model, um, mm -hmm. I know it's, I'm probably crazy saying it, talking about future-proof cameras, but I do feel with this camera that, you know, you're not going to get left on, you know, with boxes of digital beta cam tapes or boxes of XD cam tapes. Um, this S by S uh, system, Mm -hmm. Speaking of the cards, how many cards do you have and how many cards do you think you need? What I have, sizes? I have six. Six out of what size? Uh, three big ones, three small ones. Oh, by big you mean? Uh, the 128 gig yep. and the 64 gig, so, I think. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it, it... Is that enough? It depends what you're doing. It's enough yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, sometimes you, you can get caught out if you're shooting, say, 4K or slow-mo because then you but really... this camera doesn't do 4K. Oh, you're talking about on the, on F the F5, F5. Yeah, 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 because I use these cards across oh, both, that's both, right. both cameras. Which is a good thing, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in, in the car, you know, I mean, I've, I've spoken about this before in um, other videos about, yeah. you know, when we used to have a pile of 10 digital beta cam tapes and then we, you know, 10 XD discs, you know, shrunk and oh, that's fantastic. And, mm. you know, now you've got these things that don't even really need their own compartment. They can yeah. just sit somewhere in the, in mm. the car, you know. Yeah. Are they expensive media? They are. They are expensive. I won't uh, quote the prices because I actually mm. didn't do the research and also I don't want to date the video and yep. B&H will probably have a different price to Sony, etc., etc. Mm. But yeah, they are fairly expensive. Yeah. But, but we forget that once upon a time we used to pay like thousands of dollars per year on, on tape stuff. I, recently I was shredding some old uh, documents that I didn't require anymore for, for tax reasons. And, and the shredding of the the receipts for, for XD discs and, and certainly, you know, digital beta cam tapes. I mean, I spent a lot of money. And I In mean, the thousands? Oh, thousands. And, and and you look at this and go, I think these are about 1,400 yeah, Aussie. Which you pay up front once. That's right. Uh, and maybe with the combination, you know, maybe you spent five dollars $6,000 in media, upfront cost, and people balk at that, but mm. they forget how, you know, you're right, we used to pay continuously thousands of dollars and, for stock and we were basically giving credit because we were buying 
you know, a few hundred dollars in discs or tapes or whatever, and well, we weren't getting that money back until, you know, the invoice got paid, mm. and and also just driving to collect them, or you mm. needed in a hurry getting a courier, and you know, this thing saves you a lot of time. It saves mm. space. You know, I've reduced, you know, what's in my utility bag that I carry with me because well, yeah. I don't need to really say any more. That's yeah. quite carrying smart. a spare uh, videotape cassette or disc. You know, it takes up more and space in your yeah, and also bag than with his that. camera. Well, yeah. I mean, if you have two 128 gig cards in this camera mm. um, you can record or if you have a power supply on um, you can record for a long time not only can you record for a long time but you can record continuously because as one card fills up and you're still recording on the second just card, jumps you can, over you, it jumps over and you can take the the full, full card replace it with a new Correct, one yeah. and relay record as and long as you, you want. And I, when, the, when the disc camera came out, the 700, yeah. and that had the feature where it had a little cache and there was yeah. an option in the menu that you could do a disc change. Mm -hmm. but, but the reality is if you're zoomed in from the back of the room, like we spoke about before, mm -hmm. you know, hitting the eject button and trying to, you know, it's not really usable shot. In the real world, no, yeah, yeah. No. So, you know, this, these cards, they are really good. Okay, so back into the menu, uh, just scroll down to this option. Mm -hmm. page here so there are uh, options what are the three options uh, one is slow-mo yep and which one, you have on your camera. I have the slow-mo option uh, the other the, one of the other ones is uh, Apple ProRes mm -hmm. and the other one I think is Avid DNX HD that's the one yes mm -hmm. and, and oh, I don't wow. have those that's not a major issue for me with all yep. the well, that's still handy for people to know uh, so it's a paid option it is yeah. a paid option and I yeah. can't speak for the um, the ProRes and the Avid one, but I know with the slow mo one, for example, uh, it was a couple of thousand dollars from really from a memory, couple of yeah. thousand dollars. But, but to have that feature set in an EMG mm. camera at 120 frames at the highest codec is still pretty good. You can uninstall the software and okay. install it on another camera, I didn't which know is that. interesting. Yeah, 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 fantastic. So okay. I've got another picture here of the back of the cameras. As we can see here from this picture, you know, another uh, advantage of these cameras is that every connector, input and output, video and audio is all there built into the body of the camera. Can you run us through some of the uh, connectors? Well, look, it's all pretty familiar stuff. It's a four pin uh, input for external Total power. power. Yep. There's uh, the 12 volt Hirose to run accessories. Such as your wireless uh, receiver. Yeah, yeah. Yep. and then the, the two, or, you know, XLR audio inputs. Uh, the audio out. Which uh, is a five pin now, I see. Yeah. Yep. And one thing this camera has, mm -hmm. um, this, the reason I've got this slide up is it can actually record an external source. Oh, so when would that come in handy? Like uh, in, uh, pool? in the news, pool feeds, yeah. Rock concerts. If you go to a, uh, a rock concert, mm -hmm. um, they invite the media, mm -hmm. um, but they supply the vision. Uh, so the vision that's up on the big screens, they oh. actually, you know, just dish out you know a few SDI cables to all the media yep. and then they regulate what footage actually goes out so they won't oh. uh, give the media say a song in its entirety yep. so they might just give a few seconds 15 seconds of one song the second song etc so the the next morning on the morning shows um, they will just have a montage basically of of the different songs. So they're sending you a feed of the cameras that are shooting the mm. concert, yeah? Yeah. And you're getting a feed of that to yeah. go into your camera. Yeah. And in the past, what would happen was yeah. you would ha take an ex uh, another recorder. Like oh, a, really? Yeah, it was either, you know, the half rack SX or, or whatever it was or the um, XD. Yeah, the J player. All those yeah. things, yeah. So um, but you had to lug that around, but the, the job still involved getting there dealing with that technical aspect um, and then going out to say shoot Vox Pops out the front and you're wheeling this sort of trolley around with the external recorder, you yeah. know, and you have to manage it. Yeah. So this is a really good feature. So it's also called, I think, officially pull feed. Pull feed, yeah. okay. And, yeah. and that can happen at major events where the networks actually mm -hmm. are designated a certain, you know, if, if uh, someone famous or royalty or whatever is there, mm. one network might be at the airport, one uh, person from another network might be at the driveway and another mm -hmm. person might be so um, they often share footage mm -hmm. and this is that's a great feature so is that sort of uh, still 
something that still happens these days? The networks share footage. <laughs> I think it. I think it is. Well, oh, okay. yeah, I think yeah. it is now. I, I don't know. I haven't. It's over twenty years, twenty three years since I um, worked full time in a TV station. But back then, uh, you didn't have features like that. In, in no, no, it was it was link trucks parked on footpaths and things uh -huh, like that. You know, uh -huh. um, wow. that didn't have all the satellite uplinks and things. But I, I think that's a good idea. But even you know, in the corporate world, that's yeah. not a bad thing. Or yeah, yeah. or if I wanted to record you know, an output from an edit system or something. Mm. Well, I've been on jobs where we've uh, shot in laboratories and they've got a microscope uh, yeah. and you can get a feed out sometimes out of the microscope yeah. to yeah, record yeah. and that's handy. Look, I think it, it's one of those features. I probably won't use it a lot, but it'll just mm. be that one time that, you know, it, it will save the day. And make you the hero. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also you'll notice in uh, that picture there, there's two SDI outputs. Oh, yeah. And that's really useful because you can have a, a clean feed out of one and then the uh, you can assign to say SDI2 has the viewfinder information. So when you say clean feed, no supers, no, no nothing. You know, battery level, no. audio meters. Mm. Yeah, just a clean feed. Yeah, so yeah. in certain environments, um, mm. you know, the director or someone might not want to see the viewfinder display you might want to see it, someone else might want to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very handy, but also, I tend to talk about the things no one else talks about, as you probably worked out, but having a, a second SDI port can be useful because those uh, connectors, you know, they're just um, backed onto a, you know, printed circuit board. And so if you have a cable uh, BNC connector there. Someone if the camera's on the ground or someone kicks it or trips over, trips the, over the it or cable. something happens while you're doing something handheld live, mm -hmm. uh, it can get damaged even if it cracks. So to have a second uh, SDI output option mm -hmm. is is insurance and redundancy. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. So uh, what other connectors do cameras like this have? Well, that this are useful. Well, this newer camera, you'll notice it actually has an HDMI output. I'm not, oh, wow. I'm not big on HDMI yep. as, as an interface, but yep. it's just with us. We have to live with it. Yep. Um, well, I wish my two thirty inch camera had a HDMI out. Mine doesn't. I've got a P2 camera. I, I haven't used it a lot, but uh, in the corporate world, you know, you might end up in a boardroom, and I've had this happen to me before. Mm -hmm. Can you just give us a feed for our uh, for our big TV? Mm -hmm. And of course, they don't have SDI inputs. Mm -hmm. uh, I have seen some projectors with SDI inputs, but they're usually, you know, up in the ceiling. So mm -hmm. uh, that's a handy option. Um, these other things. No one talks about Genlock. Technically, they actually are quite important. Well, certainly if you're doing multi-camera or uh, and shooting long-form stuff like mm. a concert, mm. where you're recording for an hour, two hours, you know, you want all the cameras to be scanning at the same rate per frame because you might have time code inputs, and they're all jam synced to the t to each frame, mm. but you know, each camera might be scanning the top of the frame on. The, on, on the top of the frame on mm. that particular time mm. code frame and the other cameras scanning it down here so mm. over a long period of time that scanning will go out of sync mm. so what genlock does is makes all the cameras okay. scan like this together well, look it just adds another element of yeah. professionalism because if yeah. it is say a concert well you know someone's paid i don't know how much they would pay to hire mm. a venue an arena mm. the costs involved in that and at the end of the day you know our our little part of, of the process um, needs to be right and and gen lock uh, especially you know, long cable runs you know the mm. SDI of course can do long cable runs and mm. and those things are really important and, and we, you know when there's a lot of noise when the concert starts and if you don't have noise cancelling headphones mm. you know you just have to have so much faith that these these mm. things are right and these are features of the broadcast spec cameras oh, that's right so time code is has always been a, a big deal in mm. the broadcast world and even more so today mm. i think is just as important as it was 20 30 mm. years ago mm. and i wish more people would uh, uh yeah pay well, more respect to to features like these in cameras yeah yeah and if you do have a chain of cameras well if you if you're not using triax cameras if, mm. if you are just matching these three or four of these cameras up in an event. Recording ISO and yeah. then post-producing the, the footage. Yeah. Well then, you know, just looping the, the time code through is, mm. is fantastic. You're having an in and an out. You yeah, know, because you, if you've got two cameras side by side, you don't have to run time code from a central source. You can mm. loop it out of one to mm. the, the one next yeah. to it. But most days of the, um, you have locker boxes that can attach to cameras and keep yeah. all the cameras in sync, yeah. uh, especially those ones that have uh, sync out as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
will allow them to also be in mm. uh, frame sync as well. But, yeah. but once again, if you were um, trying to build up a Frankenstein rig, um, you know, that would be a distribution amplifier, it'd be more cables, it'd be more interfaces, and you know, power supplies, power batteries, supplies. things oh, that go need, wrong. We need a detap to Hirose to power that distribution amplifier. And it only takes regular twel regulated 12 volts, not All of you those. Know, battery 16 volts. All of those. Yeah. So, you know, once we're just highlighting, you know, really how good these self contained cameras are. Yep. Okay, so what we've got here, one of my favourite subjects is um, weight. And, right. and center of gravity. Um, so this was just the, I did I did remove, as I did in my last video, I did remove the, the foam shoulder pad to sort of make it square. This is quite a comfortable camera to work mm -hmm. with. Again, another advantage of this form factor. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to emulate the design of a camera being able to sit comfortably and well balanced on your shoulder. Yeah, and this camera, I think, to check the specs, it is lighter. I think it's about 900 grams lighter. Than? than an F800. Okay. And it uses less power because it doesn't have the spinning disc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but this gives you all the, you know, the, the dynamics, if you mm -hmm. like, of you know, operating in the field. If you have to, um, if you're not in a position to, say, take your tripod, mm -hmm. um, this is another area where these cameras shine. You say, mm -hmm. well, I haven't got the tripod because I can't carry it. Or you're, again, the example we brought up once before in another video. Mm -hmm. You're at a red carpet event at the mm. Logies or Academy Awards, and you there's that, and and just say so you have to improvise when you don't have the tripod. You mm. know, you might say um, have to get in a taxi to drive you somewhere because you can't get your car in. Mm. Haven't got the tripod. Okay, well look, I'll just rest the um, the camera on the sidewalk, uh, put my hand under there just to you know give it the angle I need. Then I can tilt the viewfinder up or um, you know, I'll just lean against this tree to sort of brace it, or, or if you do get caught out with any of those, those helpful um, mm -hmm. aids, then you, know, you can just brace, like we have in, uh, showed in the other video. So um, that's, that's an important one, I mm. think. Yeah. And uh, as we can see here, the, the um, center of gravity on the camera is relatively close to where the shoulder sits. I can see, yeah. I have used this, you know, in, in long form uh, handheld situations before, and this is quite a comfortable camera to use in mm -hmm. those situations. I, I did take the hand off there. I didn't uh, take it off for very long, but I just wanted to demonstrate it does uh, sit there quite nicely. Mm, fantastic. Well, I think we're near the end of our uh, talk about two thirty inch cameras. I think so, and I, I do love these cameras. They're, mm. they're in my DNA, um, mm. you know, when I started my career. It was with these cameras, you know, it's really only been... You started in news, I yeah? started it as a, a, the, one of the local TV stations here in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. uh, Channel 9. Channel 9, right. yeah. And, um, you know, it was either film or these cameras or, you know, high-end film. There wasn't a lot in between. So, mm. um, you know, the last... You know, I guess since the 5D came on board, came into the system, which is, you know, that's... 2008. Yeah, and everything just sort of... Uh, has unfolded ever since, but mm. I still think there's a place for these cameras in the real world for, for us service providers. Yep. That yes, we do need the shallow depth of field cinematic look for some jobs. Yep. Uh, but we also might have to shoot sport, mm -hmm. and we might have to shoot awards nights. Yep. And I'm afraid to say that these cameras do it better. And I just remind everyone there is a 4K version of this camera. If 4K is a deal breaker, you can mm. get a 4K version of this camera. So in that form factor, ENG lenses, mm. ENG uh, form factor, 4K sensor, but it's still 230 inch? It's still 230 inch, oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. And I mean, there are techniques for uh, throwing the background out of focus. You know, you just... We used to do them for ages with these, uh, these just cameras. Step, step back. And, and zoom in, zoom in you and know. open up, yeah. put an ND. It's not as good. In. I admit, yeah, it's not yeah. as good as a. Or super as easy, especially if you're in a tiny, yeah. tiny room in someone's living room or, or bedroom, and you need to film yeah. an interview with them. Yeah. And I, I've um, done a job with this where I shot some sport, and I, you know, the FS5 comes along with a 50 mm lens. It's actually quite small. It just fits in a portable brace bag. Mm -hmm. So you could say, well, look, I'll do um, the ISO. Uh, action on this in slow mo, and then we can just pull out the um, the FS5 just with a little satchler wedge on there. Mm -hmm. Take this off, plonk that on, and and do your shallow depth of field interviews in the grandstands well, or whatever. Which is what it's great for. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So the right tool for the right job. Yeah. One camera does not no. do do everything anymore. No, no, no. no. And yeah. you know we're in business. Yep. And uh, the Super 35 Cinema stuff just does not 
um, cut it in, in certain environments, but mm. it doesn't a lot. But you know, this is still, I feel, my subjective mm. opinion, this is actually still a really important camera. Yeah. Well, I've still got my two inch camera and it's, it's been very handy on, on many jobs where it is the, be- the right choice and the mm. best choice for that particular job. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, that talk on two inch cameras. And hopefully we'll see you again on another video. Another one. And I do love talking about these cameras, so feel free uh, to send me an email if you like. I'm, I'm happy to discuss them because I do love them. Yeah. And uh, can we say, um, leave your comments? Sure, do that. <laughs> do that. I think that's the first time we've said that. Leave your comments below the video.